And uh, I'm going to ask you all now to introduce yourselves. Just before I do, I want to remind you, uh, please hold your questions to the end because you're going to have them. You are going to have them. Uh, but a lot of the questions, we've been doing presentations like this, either this presentation or a variant thereof, mm -hmm. uh, for, for over three years now. Uh, jointly, and, and uh, we've learned uh, which questions really often get asked, and, and we've learned to kind of anticipate them and built it into the presentation. So it'll just slow Mike down if he's constantly, you know, answering well, what if this, what if that. Okay. So let's uh, let's try and hold the questions and tell a place where we'll stop and we'll take them. Okay. Um, and as far as uh, uh, participation goes, we'd really like this to be kind of like an audience participation thing. Uh, Mike, you ever go to a melodrama? No, uh, not familiar no, with that term. Oh my goodness! Okay, how about uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show? You ever at least yes. hear of that? Yes. Of okay. Mm. <laughs> part of the fun is is being in the audience. I mean, part of the fun is is not just being entertained, but uh, but participating. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and so that's that's what we're going to do here. Now we can't uh, unmute everybody's microphone. Uh, right now we have thirty six people on the line, three dozen folks, uh, and, and if you know the doorbell rings or. You know, your dog barks at you, or your wife wants to ask you a question, or your husband wants to know what you're doing. Well, gosh, uh, it, it becomes uh, kind of difficult for us all to uh, concentrate. But uh, we are going to have some audience partici participation by way of the polls and prompts. Okay, so let's do the first one. I would like for you to introduce yourself. First of all, what kind of options plays are you doing right now, okay? The answers range from, uh, well, I don't do options, okay, uh -huh. options immunoliking, to uh, what I call the gateway drug, <laughs> uh, covered calls. A lot of folks have gotten involved in co covered calls, and it's usually yes. the first exposure that uh, most folks have to options. It's, it's what, how you and I got started, isn't it, Mike? That's exactly right. That's how I started. And when I first applied to trade options, well, I, did, I had a small stock account, but the only thing I was allowed to do was trade covered calls. Right, and uh, later on we kind of find out why uh, why you get cleared to do that. Um, I think it's because there's one born every minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was certainly a stacker. Uh, anyway, Mike, you actually had written a book uh, based on uh, your successful uh, cover call experiences um, and naked puts, and that was uh, uh, published by Power Financial Group, and you and uh, Ernie Zarena co-authored that. Is that correct? Yeah, the Naked Puts book, it was more focused on uh, Naked Put strategies themselves, although I used oh. the same kind of stock criteria that I would use for a covered call. And, uh, you know, when I first started trading, I was doing covered calls, and then afterwards I branched out into Naked Puts and calendar spreads. And uh, we had a different covered call course that Ernie and Greg wrote together. So uh, the approach that Ernie and I wrote up about was using the Naked Puts with the same type of stock approach. Uh, and trying to get stocks at a discount, but it had the same exact windfall that covered calls would over time, where your yeah. winners make maybe two, maybe two and a half, maybe three percent, but if you get stuck with a loser, a stock that drops 20 percent, you're forced to buy the stock, and it has an unrealized loss of 20 percent. Well, eventually, if you close that out for a loss, it's going to wipe out potentially 10 to eight previous trades. So you're back to square one uh, after four or five months of trading, perhaps, so. Right. You, you have to be right a lot, uh, oh. essentially, in, in order to really make profit at that long term. You have to, you have to really be right a lot. Um, well, Mike, uh, here's the results. We had a tie between covered calls, uh, naked puts, and uh, spread trades and combinations, and that's kind of cool. We've got about two-thirds of the audience doing those kinds of trades, and, and so I'm, I'm thinking that... Um, uh, that our spread trades especially are going to be really exciting to folks. Do you want to uh, share that with everyone there? We're gonna oh, am I not polls. showing it? Yeah, I don't. Oh think my it. goodness! Oh, okay. is it being shown? No, it is sharing. I'm sorry, it was sharing. Everyone saw that. Good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Very good. And so, um, uh, let's see, Mike. I wanted to ask one more uh, poll question before we dive in. I'm going to tell them what to expect out of today's training, and uh, then we're going to deliver it, and then we're going to measure our delivery. We're going to say. Uh, you know, has this uh, actually benefited you? Okay, so right now we need to take a little bit of a baseline reading, and to say, okay, if you're doing those kinds of options plays, what uh, you know, how happy are you with it? Mm -hmm. How happy are you with your trading? Now that uh, we've established, uh, you know, what what kinds of things you're doing. Okay. <clears throat> nobody said, by the way, in the in the previous poll, nobody said options mean no likey. So right. I, I think we've got a pretty savvy audience. A lot of folks are going to understand the terms and, and so forth, so we don't have to go into it. 
Uh, that's good. It's going to make for a quicker paced webinar. Okay, let's uh, leave that up for another five seconds. Three, two, one. All right, if you haven't participated, make sure you do because this is really helpful not just to Mike and me, but also to you in terms of, uh, of the Socratic method of teaching. Okay? Mm -hmm. Teach by, by way of asking questions. Okay, so I threatened to close it and I didn't yet. Let me go ahead and close it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, results. Okay, so looking back over the last 12 months, 0% said that they were like, you know, very happy, you know. Uh, I wonder if they were happy before this morning, but that kind of maybe wiped them out. You know, I haven't even checked the market, Mike. Uh, is it down? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not <laughs> trying to be cocky. I'm just, I'm really, I'm serious. I have not checked the market because I've got a lot of, you know, positions that are protected. Uh, what's going on? Well, the indexes are down. Some of the indexes are down about uh, three and a half or three percent to two and a half percent. SPX is down two point eight percent. NDX is down two point four. The Dow Jones is down three point one. Uh, the volatility index is up seven percent. So, wow, wow. How about that? Well, I've got some shorts maybe to close. Um, yeah, we'll look into that later. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so anyway, um, uh, yeah. Mike, uh, uh, we've actually, you, you've had an experience where you were working during the flash crash of uh, May uh, 6, 2010, mm -hmm. and, and during that time, uh, uh, somebody that you were coaching, you were doing a coaching session, they said, hey, i got to get off the phone, i gotta, I got to go manage some trades, something's going on, I don't understand, and, uh, and what did you tell them? I said, well, okay, I understand, you have to go make your trades, but, uh, and then he asked me, well, aren't you concerned, and I said, no, I've got... Uh, most of my positions right now are either bulletproof, which we'll talk about in a little bit, or are near bulletproof. I know exactly where I stand on those positions, and uh, I'm comfortable right now. Even if it drops down and it drops down further, um, two positions were going to have a guaranteed return, and I was long stock, and one position was only going to have a loss of maybe about 0.8 or 1% or so. <laughs> okay, so you're bulletproof, meaning that you had a guaranteed gain no matter what the stock did. Yes, and then you and then you also had a position that if you know a, a train hit your stock, you'd lose one percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just wanted to convey that to everybody because that's that's why Mike and I are being so glib right now. It's like, oh, I guess the market's down, whatever. You know? And we don't want to make anybody angry with that. What we want to do is bring it to the position that we're in, uh, which is not not worrying so much. You know, mm -hmm. there's a a down day. Okay, uh, Mike, we have 35% say I'm happy with my trading, but I can stand to be happier. Uh, so that's about one third of the audience, and the other two thirds of the audience are, are less than happy. Okay, we have 43% uh, mixed emotions, 9% unhappy, just plain, hey, look, no, I'm not into this, uh, and 13% say my, I'm ready to quit. Okay, so um, well, that's our baseline, all right? A little bit later on, we're going to uh, see if we delivered on these promises, okay? In this webinar, I'm going to make you three bold promises. Here's the first one. Okay, I'm going to show you the solution to the biggest problem facing traders today. Mm -hmm. All right, in fact, I'm willing to bet that you'll take a look back over the last 12 months that we just, uh, you know, were thinking about and, uh, and wish that you had done it sooner. Okay. Number two, I'm going to show you a riskless spread trade. Now, this should uh, perk up the ears of the, uh, the spread traders out there. I'll show you a riskless spread trade, which is done at a credit. It means that you take a credit to do it. Okay. And usually, Mike, when you take a credit on a trade, does that mean that it could come back and bite you later? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Many people who have gone through a credit spread portfolio or have entered positions in a credit spread, I, I can open a spread that will look like it'll give me a 10% or 11% return, making 50 cents, maybe against a risk of 450. It looks great up front, but once that stock starts to turn, if it starts to turn against me, it might cost me a dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars, or the full 450 to get out of the position. I might take the full loss, and I'm wiping out, you know, several trades at that point. That's right. Mike, uh, the, the proprietary income methods of uh, the radioactive trading, uh, some of them are spread trades, and mm -hmm. some of those spread trades are done at a credit, and those credits uh, are done in the context, they're done in a structure that if the credit goes against you, the credit spread goes against you, Mm -hmm. That's okay, <laughs> because uh, another leg of your uh, position gains by more than that. And so, uh, long story short, okay, uh, I do show how to do riskless spread trades. It's riskless because of the context 
in which it's done. Okay, the particular one I'm going to show today takes good credit to put on, and normally this particular spread would involve infinite risk, but um, the way that we're going to show it, it is riskless. Okay, so that's a big order. That's a tall order to deliver on. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Now, finally, uh, I'm going to show one of several techniques that I use to take a credit while leaving the upside potential of the stock completely open. Okay. It takes a credit but does not use a short call. So Mike, uh, generally speaking, when we, when we think of taking a credit on a stock that we own, where does our head go? Well, when we're taking a credit in, we figure that uh, we're going to have to cap our losses. If I sell a call against the stock I own, I know that I have a uh, limited upside now. I've capped my upside potential gain. Yeah, you cap the gain, right? I think mm -hmm. you say cap your losses. But, uh, I'm but, sorry. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we say the same terms over and over, you know. But um, uh, but the point is, when 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 you sell a covered call, you rein in what your possible gain could be. You you you, uh, you limit it what your possible mm -hmm. gain could be. Uh, this is the opposite. It takes a credit but leaves the upside open. And it's a riskless spread trade that you've likely never seen anywhere else. The, 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 the one on the previous screen, you've seen it before, but you've seen it with infinite risk. Okay, I take out that infinite risk. And uh, number two, this one right here, you've likely never seen this spread anywhere else. I invented it in 2003. I've been writing about it ever since. All right, so anyway, towards the end of the program, I'm gonna point out the difference that knowing these two techniques, means in dollars and cents, we're gonna give an example and I will have given you these strategies with no charge. Okay, so folks, if you think that's pretty cool, then I'd like you to stick around. Mike, what time is it? It's 12.17 Eastern Time, sir. Okay, that's quite enough buildup. Let's get to the meat and potatoes, shall we? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna solve the biggest problem once and for all. We're gonna do a riskless spread trade that captures premium, and uh, we're gonna show how to take credit without limiting your upside. We've already done this baseline reading. How happy are you with your trading results? But Mike, we didn't ask this. What do you think your biggest problem is? And again, this is the Socratic, Socratic method of teaching. I'm going to ask questions, and your answers to those questions are going to show you something that if I just glibly stated something, if I just stated a, a fact, it wouldn't make as much of an impact. It wouldn't make as much of a difference, okay? So I'm just going to ask the audience, look, if I could wave a magic wand and solve one of these problems for you, which would you choose it to be? You know, uh, <clears throat> Mike, did you see that movie Aladdin, the Disney movie? Yes, I did. Robin Williams, and mm. yeah. <laughs> Me too. You know why? I've got kids. <laughs> so I've seen it more times than I'd like. But, uh, you know, Aladdin, uh, he had a genie with three wishes, and, and, and actually he screwed up with the first wish. He screwed the things up further with the second wish, and finally his third wish, you know, made everything right, but he lost everything in the process. And uh, I think that if I had a genie that offered me three wishes, my very first wish would be the wisdom to choose the other two wishes wisely, you know, to, to, to choose them so that it didn't come back and bite me in the <clears throat> you-know-where, all right? Well, uh, Mike, we've got uh, folks here wishing for every single one of these uh, things that we put on the smorgasbord here. Good. Okay, uh, I'm trying to share the poll. Is it working? Yes. Do we see it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so 7% say uh, I need more time trading, okay, 13% uh, want to pick winners, okay, 7% say my timing's bad, uh, a whopping 43% say, geez, you know, I wouldn't mind losing a few if I could limit losses, a mm -hmm. lot, <laughs> and then 30% say I need better entry and exit signals. Now, Mike, I'm not going to say which of these five things I think everybody needs, okay, but I think it's going to be evident by the rest of the presentation, okay, and and it's gonna we're also gonna show how it's uh, not just possible but practical and doable. And there's uh, there's something real quick I want to say. I know you're going to address this, but I want to I want to bring it up because uh, I think a lot of people have a misnomer regarding the entry and exit signals. Uh -huh. For example, a lot of people, a lot of investors out there might have thought it might have been long stock or in bull put credit spreads or in a directional bullish position this week. 
and you know left them open overnight and then this morning you know everything's down three percent they might have had a winning position or look like a break-even position and now it's at a loss um, and they're thinking oh what signal could I have used to have gotten out of this to have done this a lot of times these types of drops that we see this morning there is no signal it's right. something that happened a geopolitical event any kind of comment um, about the economy especially in this volatile market there's probably no signal you could have seen to get out of this position. No MACD trend, no Bollinger Band trend, nothing along those lines. It's just a market condition. It's a market, I don't want to say anomaly, but it, these happen all the time where something comes up and you wake up in the morning, you're down 4%. What was a winning position yesterday is now a losing position, and there's no way you could have seen that signal coming. That's right. You know, there's, there's, uh, there's really no way to know the future of the market. If there was, there wouldn't be a market. That's and right. It's a vehicle for transferring risk from one party to another. Well, Mike, um, uh, here's here's something that I wanted to bring up. Okay, uh, this little chestnut that everybody's heard is the trader's maximum. Cut your losers short, and I'd like for somebody in the audience to tell me the rest of the saying. Okay, cut your losers short, and uh, what's the rest? Nobody's going to tell me. Out of 46 people in the room, we got 46. Ten, ten more came in the room. Uh, I, I know Glenn's going to write in in a second, I'm sure. There he is. <laughs> there I know. he goes. Was it not? Wasn't Glenn, was it, actually? Was that Gensley? Or yeah. That? Oh, and Susie and Ray. Gina and Susie, and Ray. Sam. Okay. Okay. Uh, and George. And we got a lot of these guys. Okay, thank you. Now I can go on. <laughs> Cut your losers short. Let your winners run. And uh, that's... Uh, uh, that sounds like you know good advice, and and uh, it sounds a lot like another saying, which is you know buy low, sell high. Um, and the reason is that we don't normally get the practical instruction of how to accomplish this, how to cut your losers short, and how to let your winners run. Okay, um, Mike, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the exact opposite of that. Okay, mm -hmm. this is the graph of a covered call. We call that the hockey stick graph. Uh, and then hockey stick is a little kitty wampus. You know, if you were a hockey player, you'd get called on this because that stick is high. It's a high stick. You know, you're in trouble. Um, but uh, Mike, what's what's really the problem with this? Well, over time, when I've talked to, mm -hmm. to many investors, I just I, I talk options, I talk option strategies with roughly 20 to 30 investors a day, and have been doing that for the past eight and a half, almost nine years now. Long term. The strategy such as this, and when you when you look at this position, naked puts, covered calls, what ends up happening is that it ends up being a sorting machine. And what we mean by that is the right. winners get called away from you. And it looks like you're you're making great progress. You might have a month where you make three percent, or three percent, three and a half percent on the five covered calls you open. Fantastic. And then the next month you might make an average of about three point two percent on your covered calls that got assigned. Everything's looking good. And then the next month, you have you open ten positions. Five of them drop down about ten or twelve percent, and the other five stayed about break even. And what you've done essentially is you've had three months of trading. You've been right probably sixty to seventy percent of the time, but you're down. You're, you're in the hole. Your winners get called away from you for a small gain, and then the losers end up staying in your account for a much longer term. And we've heard a lot of gurus who who advocate covered calls trading curves. Well, it doesn't matter if the stock goes down, does it? Because as long as you don't sell it, it's not a loss. No, if I'm in a covered call <laughs> position and my stock drops 20%, and my guru is telling me, oh, it's not a loss, you'll, you'll be able to recover that. Well, if I'm only generating 2 2 and a half, three 3% per month selling calls and assume that the stock stays at the same price, well, if I'm down you know, 30%, that's going to take me close to 12 to 15 months just to get back to break even. You know, that's, right. to me, that's a loss, and that's a long time to be holding a stock without being able to do anything with it. So I got to decide whether to take the loss and find a different position. But to me, that's a loss. Even if it's unrealized, it's a loss. It's going to be much harder to manage that position now. That's right. The managing of the position that's down. I, I hear this all the time about a stock repair strategy. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, honestly, I, I do something very similar to the stock repair strategy to, uh, well, to uh, not have to repair it at all. Right. <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, the point is, you know, when I lectured, I lectured about this at MIT in 2008, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, there was there's a number of computer science uh, PhDs and and uh, mathematics PhDs in the room, and they agree with me that this was a an algorithm, a sorting algorithm that sorts winners out of your account, and 
keeps you with the losers. Okay. Now spread trades. If we're going to address the covered callers, we got to address the spread traders too. Yes. Okay. Most spreads. Now I know that there are some spreads that have unlimited upside potential, and there are spreads that have unlimited risk as well. But most folks that do spread trades are doing vertical spreads. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, Mike, let's say I'm bearish and I uh, sell a bear call spread. Okay. I sell the fifties and buy the fifty fives. 50-55, got it. Okay, so I take in a credit. Now, if the stock goes down to 45, I was right. Do I make money? Absolutely, but yeah. you only make the maximum gain. You can only make the net credit on your position. You can't make any more than that. Well, what if I'm really, really right, and the stock goes down to like 10 cents a share? Do I make a boatload then? You make your 50 cents per share. Oh, I, it's, it's locked in, mm -hmm. in other words. Okay, so uh, being right, I can I can take my my uh, losses if I'm wrong, right? It, it takes a small loss. It's it's uh, it's dialed in, you know. Uh, I cut my losers short, as it were. Mm -hmm. But for letting winners run, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Now, what if I've got two legs? You know, if I've got a condor going on, do I want the stock to go way high or way low? Absolutely not. What Kurt refers to as a condor with two legs, he means if he has a bear call credit spread open and a bull put credit spread open on the same stock. In that case, you don't want the stock to move at all. It's a neutral position. You need it to be between your sold call strike price and your sold put strike price. That's right. Mike, I got this crazy idea about 10 years ago that limiting the downside risk but at the same time leaving the upside open was the way to actually uh, set up kind of an algorithm, if you will, to set up kind of a uh, a structure mm -hmm. that would allow that trader's maxim to work. Cut your losers short and let your winners run. Now let me ask you this. Does this protective put or married put position, does that look congruent with that saying? It looks like it's forcing us into that saying, isn't it, Kurt? Right, yeah. Uh, we have a bullish outlook just like with the, the, the cover call, okay? Because you wouldn't buy stock unless you had at least <laughs> some bull in you, right? That's right. right. And uh, <clears throat> it is, in fact, safer. I think that it's, uh, uh, I think that it's um, kind of a, oh, what should I say? It's propaganda <laughs> to say that uh, the risk of a cover call is safe. But this really is safer. Yeah, the covered call saying safer is kind of semantics. We we agree that it's potentially safer than owning stock outright because at least you have a little bit of a hedge from the premium you collected. Maybe. But it's really not a safer strategy overall. You're still risking 97, 96, or 95 percent of what you invested in the position. That's right. And uh, but the, the this is the only uh, one that I've seen uh, at least out of these graphs here so far, right? That has an unlimited potential reward. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to take a second right here and now, and I'm going to solve the biggest problem that most folks have in their trading. We're going to show the structure of a radioactive profit machine, and then after that, we're going to show how it performs. Then we're going to talk about some theory, but then we're going to talk about some real-life expectations. Okay. And I think it's going to be exciting, uh, you know, and even if the math isn't exciting, you know, the prospect of being wrong more often than you're right, but still making money kind of takes the, well, it takes the heat off of you, right? I mean, as far as your stock selection process and your entry and exit and, mm -hmm. and days like today, you know, uh, if, if you're wrong more often than you're right, but you still make money, hey, it's a happy thing. Now, Mike, here's a structure, and I'm, and I'm using this, structure, this uh, trade from a year ago, and the reason that I'm doing that is because I've played this stock twice in the last 12 months. One time, it was a winner. Uh, you know, from open to close, and another time it was a loser from the time I opened it to the time I closed it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the net of both plays is that I made nearly $1,000. I was uh, right one time, and I was really, really wrong the other time, but I still made money. So mm -hmm. that's a 50%, you know, 50% 50 accuracy, I guess, as far as choosing stocks, but um, uh, and, and timing, you know. But uh, as far as uh, the profit, well, the profit was there. So here's the deal, Mike. I picked up Altera shares at 27.35 last year, mm -hmm. and at the same time, a March 2011 $29 put option for 350. Well, that makes for a total investment of $30.85. Now, right here is where you stopped me about three years ago and said, 
Go ahead. Well, Kurt, I understand that you're limiting your risk, and that's fantastic. You've got a low risk here of 6%, but you've got a total investment now of 3085, and you're not going to make a dime on this position until the stock moves up to 3095. I mean, that's uh, essentially $3.60 from where it's trading now. That's close to an 18, 17% gain. Now, if you, I said, if you thought the stock was going to gain 17%, you might have a better approach. Uh, using leverage, of course, <laughs> which you just proved <laughs> you but you might find a better approach to take advantage of this. And I wasn't exactly wrong, but I definitely wasn't right. The truth is, is that you can't make a dime on this position until the stock goes up to $30.95, if and only if you held this position all the way to March expiration, made no adjustments. Right. Am I in control of those two things, Mike? Can, can I decide whether or not to hold it all the way till expiration? Absolutely. You're not bound to only hold this position. It's not a, uh, <clears throat> like a European-style contract where you have to hold it to March or, or a restricted European contract where you have to hold it to March. You can choose to liquidate any part of this position, liquidate the whole position, or make adjustments on this position at any time between now and March expiration. You're in control because you've bought two assets. That's right. Okay. So, uh, and, and of course, I also choose whether or not I'm going to do an income method. Okay, exactly. An, an adjustment. Okay. So, uh, so looking at this, most folks might say, okay, Kurt, that stock has to move up $3.60 before you make, you know, $0.10 cents, uh, because of this big uh, expense that you've made. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate later on that that's not true. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, here's the here's the the really cool part about it. I have a guaranteed exit of twenty nine dollars. Okay, because of that put option, no matter what happens to the stock, if the stock goes down to like ten cents a share, so what? I'm able to get out at twenty nine dollars because of that put option. Mm -hmm. So the difference between what I have spent and what I'm guaranteed to get back is a dollar eighty five, and that's all of my risk. A dollar eighty five divided by thirty eighty five means that I have only 6% of my capital at risk in this trade. Now, having said this, okay, uh, I want to go to our trade simulator tool. Okay, Let's check out our trade simulator tool. And what we're going to do ahead, is go Where's to radioactivetrading.com and then right. click the free resources tab. And uh, here you have a couple of the free resources. You can get a free two-week trial of the Power Options tools or you can take a look at the trade simulator tool here. I just wanted to show everyone where we were going and how they could access this uh, after the presentation if they want to play around with it. Very good. Okay. Now, uh, remember my assertion was that you could make, uh, you could be wrong more often than right and still make money. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not always is available unless you uh, are practicing a very specific form of money management, which we're going to reveal you know, for free today. But um, uh, let's take a look at this. This is our trade simulator tool. Essentially what it does is it flips a coin 100 times. Okay, do you see this? Uh, I don't know if you can see the stop motion as I'm uh, scrolling through it's it. It's coming you? across very well, yeah. So we see that we have strings of winners and losers, and there's a big string of winners, and then we have a couple losses thrown in, and then a few more winners, and uh, averages out. We're up to 70 trades now, just flipping the coin 70, 92 times, 93 times, and so forth. Three losses right. at the end, oh. yep. Yeah. Three lost at the end takes down. Okay, so here's the deal, Mike. We have got uh, a record over here of 100 trades, mm -hmm. okay, simulated trades. Uh, 53 were winners, 47 were losers. We took $10,000, okay. Target return was percent, so whenever our trade realized a 10% gain, we said, okay, there's our exit signal, let's get out, okay. Or uh, whenever it generated a 10% loss, we said, okay, there's our stop, let's get out. All right, and so 50% winner or 50% likelihood okay, on each trade produced in this case 53 wins and 47 losses. So we took $10,000, and at one point we had a high value of 15,306. So that's a 53% gain. Look at this. There's a kind of a nail biter there on the low value. What do you think of that? Well, it's a 44% loss. We would have taken our account down by about 44%. That's not a nail-biter. That's a catastrophe. And uh, <laughs> at some point, if we were actually trading this as investors, if we were trading this method, whatever this particular method was, 
probably by the time that we drop down to six thousand dollars or forty percent or hopefully maybe even sixty five or seventy thousand dollars drop thirty or thirty five percent we probably would have abandoned uh, this particular trading technique that's right if if we didn't abandon it maybe our husband or wife would talk us out of it and so we'd end up with that loss now uh, because of persistence here uh, and and a hundred uh, trials and, and more winners and losers we ended up with a meager gain, okay? We did have a meager gain at the end, okay? Instead of $10,000, it's 11046 mm -hmm. So that's about a 10% gain, all right? But uh, for a 40, what is that, 43, 44% drawdown to get a 10% gain, that's not really attractive to me. Now, Mike, um, here's the deal. This is predicated on winning more often than you lose. We run that simulation again, and we came up with a, well, see, oh, there's a better It's a record. little bit better, mm-hmm. That's a good record. Okay, we have 56 wins that time, double the account, good deal. And the losses were, of course, but, limited uh, this is, because we, yeah, we got this lucky in the first few trades. <laughs> right. This is random every time, just like the market, right? We can't predict data like today. But uh, here I ran the simulation again, and we have more losers than winners. We had 55 losers, 45 winners, and so therefore we took our $10,000. At one point, rolled it up to thirteen thousand. So we, we uh, six hundred forty-six. So we had a thirty-six percent gain. We mistakenly believed that we were doing winning plays, and then ended up with an ending amount of uh, a seventy-eight percent loss. Mm -hmm. Not cool. Mike, I'm going to do this one thing. Remember how we we dialed in our loss limit to six percent with that uh, radioactive profit machine? The Altera trade. That's right. The most you could have risked, even in the worst case scenario, was only six percent. Okay. Now, what I actually got out of that was 12. Okay. But let's just leave the target return 10. Okay. And let's dial in a loss limit of 6 and see what happens. Okay. We run the simulation. Okay. Now, look, we had more winners than losers, so Oof. of course we're going to have a really big result. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but let's see what happens if we have more losers than winners. I have to do this a few times to... to uh, because it's random, I have to do this a few times before we uh, come up with a 50-50 record. Oh boy, keep getting, we're, we're hey, winning too much. Yeah. Okay, okay, here we go, Mike. Look at this. More losses than wins. Mm -hmm. Should I do it again to have more losses? Yeah, I want to see more losses, Kurt. There Lots you go. Lots of losses. There we go. Okay, only 45% winners. Now, Mike, if I went on the internet and I was searching for trading systems. Mm -hmm. One of the trading systems was bragging that they had a 45% record of picking winners. Do you think I would click on that link? <laughs> no. That doesn't sound attractive <laughs> at all. We're right 45% of the time. Well, thank you. I'm going to move on to the next one. Right. Okay, but in this case, we were right only 45% of the time and ended up doing better uh, than any of the... Um, uh, any of the ten tens, okay, even the ones where we, gosh, uh, uh, that 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 one that we're clicking on, we had fifty six wins. What did we yes. end up with? Twenty thousand. Okay. Yes. So mm -hmm. This time, yeah. So this time we end up with twenty four thousand, right? And we were wrong most of the time. Kind of interesting. Okay. This is uh, this is what's important for you all to understand. Okay, you can actually, whoops, I don't want to show this stuff. You can actually be wrong more often than right and still make money. Now, Mike, I'm going to just do a, a quick poll, okay? Okay. And and uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to say, okay, look, if last year you practiced this kind of money management that we made, uh, not just available, but we force ourselves into with the purchase of a put option. Okay, if you kept your wins from like, but you were able to uh, lower your losses from whatever they were to six percent per trade, mm -hmm. or or just one percent of your overall portfolio, I'll explain that later. Uh, would you have answered differently? Would you have said yes? I'm very happy with my trading. Would uh, did you say no or mixed emotions? But you would have said yes. Did you had a, a losing year and this would have made it a winning year? Or, you know, would you have lost but lost much less? Or can he honestly look me in the eye and say, Kurt, I never did take a loss of more than 6% last year and I still lost overall? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm leaving plenty of time for folks to answer this. We, we've got a really, really uh, revealing results here. This is really something, Mike. Um, before we had zero percent on the very very happy end, right? 
Yes. Didn't we? Yeah, in today's poll. Zero percent that were extremely happy. Yeah, and there was like uh, 35 percent that said, I'm happy, but I can stand to be happier. 35 exactly. Okay. I'm going to close this poll and share the results. Uh, how, does, how does going from zero to 50 percent grab you? 50% of our audience would have said, yes, I'm very happy with my trading results if they only practiced you know, uh, what we have shown so far. Mm -hmm. Wow. 28% had said no or mixed emotions but would have had a happy year. And 22% had a losing year and this would have made it a winner. That's uh, fabulous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, now let me show you why that is. Okay, I'm going to show why that is, and then we're going to uh, show some practicals and also the history of the Altera trade and uh, both trades, the losing one and the winning one. Okay, Got it. so so uh, uh, Mike, uh, let me go ahead and hide that before before going on to the income methods. Let's begin with my claim of having solved the biggest problem that any trader faces. Okay, the biggest problem that any trader faces is the losing plays, right? Yes. So let's compare owning three positions, straight stock, covered call, and the married put set up the way that I showed it. Mike, uh, which of the uh, all, are all of these bullish? Uh, that's right, yeah. They're all neutral to bullish. We're expecting a stock to stay the same or move up in price. Okay, very good. All right, now if your stock goes up 20%, if you're the stock trader, you get the most gain out of those three plays. Okay, 20% mm -hmm. gain, good for you. The covered caller is going to make less. He's going to make money, but he's going to make less because of why? Well, because he capped, uh, he capped his gains, didn't he? We sold the call and capped the upside without putting more money in the position. If the stock moves up 20%, we're only going to make that 3.5%, 4 maybe 5% return. Right, okay. Now, the married put is going to yield less. I've got to be honest with that. It's going to make a little bit less than the stock's movement itself mm -hmm. okay uh, but um, uh, keep in mind that uh, when when you make s uh, some money when you don't lose too much on your losing place you've got more to put into a winning play so more to put in equals more gain right. <laughs> even if it's just a 12% gain if you had more to play with well good so anyway <laughs> we've got uh, three different types of uh, wins okay mm -hmm. and we take our winnings and we put them into a new play but this time, the stock goes down 20%. What happens to our stock owner? Well, they're going to have a significant loss in their position, aren't they, Kurt? Yeah, he takes the biggest hit. Mm -hmm. Now, the covered caller is going to take less of a hit because of his hedge. He's not going to take as much of a hit because of the income that he received. And then, of course, that call expires worthless, but the stock is still down. Okay? But the married put, the way that we showed it just now, only loses 6%, right? That's right. Okie dokie. So, <clears throat> if the straight stock loses 20%, then makes 20%, we're right where we started, right? Yes. Well, actually, <laughs> we think we <laughs> are, aren't we? Yep. <laughs> yeah, but the fact is that if you take a 20% loss and then a 20% win, or you make a 20% win and then take a 20% loss, either direction, you're going to have a net loss. And that's, that's because of the way that math works. Think about it. $10,000 plus 20% equals $12,000. You take your $12,000 and play it and take a 20% loss, you're going to end up with a $2,400 loss. Mm -hmm. You end up behind the curve by 4%. Not good. Okay, but what about the covered caller? He takes income both ways. He takes income on the way up by selling his call. Yes. He takes income on the way down by selling his call. Is he going to do better or worse? Oh, he's going to do much worse, again, because the gain was capped on the onset. So he didn't make as much on the way up, but he still lost a significant amount on the way down. Right. So he didn't cut his losers short and let his winners run. He did the reverse, and that ended up actually exacerbating, ooh, my big word for the day, exacerbating his loss. This is worse than if he had just been playing straight stock. Mm-hmm. Okay. But... In this example, now remember this is a theoretical, but I'm going to give a practical here in just a minute. The married put makes 12% on the way up, but loses only 6% on the way down. So guess what? Out of the three plays, this is the only one that had a net gain. That's right. It had a net gain. And the wilder the market, the more necessary and the more effective the married put is. The wilder the market, the more necessary and the more effective 
the married put is. Okay, and look, we're only right half of the time. We've got a 50% trading record, but we're making money, and we're making it because of the structure of the trade. I want to remind you, this is the same market, but different end results. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're practicing that trader's maxim of cut losers short and let winners run. In fact, we're forcing ourselves into a corner. Now that was a nice little bit of theory, okay? But I want to go ahead and show uh, how this plays out in the real world, okay? So that Altera setup that I showed just now, uh, back September 14th of last year, mm -hmm. okay? The stock went up 17.3 percent during the time I was holding it, okay? And I, but I only made 12 percent. How come it was less? How come I only made 12? Well, we showed that just in the beginning. If the stock moved up 20%, you had an expectation of making 15% with the married put because you had to pay for the insurance. We can't get something for nothing. Uh, so in this case, you know, you had a hedge in place that you bought insurance in case the stock dropped 17, 18, or 19%, or, or even 5 or 6%. You had a hedge in place. So we didn't make as much on the way up. Hmm. Okay, uh, so that, that is a, a, a reality. You do pay for your insurance policy, okay? But, uh, Mike, uh, the insurance policy can really pay you back. Mm -hmm. Here's the deal. The second time I played Altera, I lost 5.6%. The, the trade was stric structured according to the same rules that are found in the blueprint, my book, okay? It was structured according to the same rules, and it was a, a very similar amount of money risked. Uh, the, the variance was like, I don't know, like uh, 5 or 10% difference, okay? It was about the same amount of money being risked. But see, the second time that I played it, the stock went down 21.8%, then I liquidated, but I liquidated for a 5.6% loss. Okay. Here's the chart. Here's the chart of both of those. Okay, here's that uh, first play with Altera where I had uh, uh, picked up 12%. The stock went up 17.3%, but I picked up only 12. Here's the second play. The second play I bought in here, mm -hmm. I was wrong. The stock went down. In fact, if I had held on any longer, the stock could have gone to here, but my loss would have been the same. My loss was only 5.6% instead of... 21.8 or 30, uh, 31.0. Right. Okay. Now, Mike, let's remember these numbers, okay? 17.3 mm -hmm. and 21.8. Got it. We got those rem rememberized? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to the trade simulator tool. Okay. So, you got to, so tell me what's the target return? We had a 17.3%. 17. Okay. And, and a 21.8%. Okay, now let's go ahead and play that and see if we ever get a winner. Oh, well, bank bankrupt. For 80 <laughs> trades. Okay, let's try. To, oh, bankrupt. <laughs> right again. Bankrupt. Let's try another time. Bankrupt. Okay, we're going to try to get more now, wins. Mike, oh, here we, we finally go. had a winner. Well, oh. Yeah, this wasn't really a winner, was it? No. We were right more often than wrong. And because we were right more often than wrong, we got lucky. Look at this. Ten and rolled it up to almost three times that amount. And we were lucky. Look at the string of winners at the first five trades, and that might even extend on. Wow. Okay. But the thing is, uh, every market has extensive uh, winners and extended losers, okay, mm -hmm. every turn of the market. And, and, and everybody on the line, I think, is going to have a trading career of at least, you know, 10 years, right? We're, we're going to be doing we this hope. for a while. We yeah, hope. we hope. You know, I mean, some folks might be joining us late in the game. They might be in their 80s, okay? <laughs> but, but then again, there might be some folks in their 20s that are doing this. And they may be in the market for a long time. Well, over the long haul, this kind of setup doesn't work. Let's see about my married results, okay? So the, the, the return was 12% and the loss was 5, five to 6. And let's see what that does for us. Hmm. Okay, there's a winner. Here I am losing more often than winning and still doing pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. That's from $10,000, rolling it way up. Here's another one, losing a lot more often than I'm winning. What a nail biter of a... a, a <laughs> uh, and it kind of, kind <laughs> of happened on the huh? fourth loss area. In the first four trades, you had three losses and one win. And at the end of those four trades, that was the low point of your trading record. Isn't that something? Okay. 
Now, folks, uh, I realize that this is uh, theoretical. Okay, we don't know. Maybe, maybe we're going to have one wins today and 99 losers after that, but it's less likely. Okay, it's less likely. I'm using yeah. a coin toss here, and if any of you have, you know, a, a trading record that's halfway decent, shoot, even five percent wins, you're going to do very well if you're able to sue your trading results and to find more losers than winners. Again. Yeah, I don't know if it happened. Oh, there we go. Okay, more losers than winners. Yes. Still making money. Okay. And it's because of the structure of the trade. All right. Mm -hmm. That's what's so dang important to understand. In case you you missed it, I just gave you the secret to making money in the stock market. Okay? It's it's to create an edge with your hedge. Okay. This had a net gain uh for the married put play. You like that, do you, Mike? <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> he snickered a little bit. <laughs> now, this was the same stock. So what does that do to the stock picking uh, argument? Hey, you've got to pick winners all the time. Well, I picked it half the time. Okay? These were the same dates. So what does that do to the argument that, man, you have to have good timing? These were the same entry and exit, right? Mm -hmm. So was it my trading system that made the difference between uh, a net losing and a net winning position? No. What it was, was the married put protecting me on the downside, but leaving the upside open. Mm -hmm. Don't pick stocks, I like to say. Pick stops. Now, Mike, that's not a stop order. Is a stop order going to be as reliable as a put option? No. I could have opened up the Altera position instead of stop, set a stop order, excuse me, of 6%. But if the stock fell 8, 9, 10% overnight or more, well, I'm not going to get filled at that 6% stop loss. I'm going to get filled at that 10% loss or that 15% loss. It's a market order that says, hey, go ahead and sell my stock at whatever price you can get once it's below the 6% line. That gaps overnight in the pre or after market hours, then I'm getting filled at a much greater loss than the 6%. That's right. Mike, uh, over my trading career the last 10 years, three times I've had a stock that I was long on. Mm -hmm. Gap overnight by more than thirty percent, more than thirty percent. Mm -hmm. And you're not the <laughs> only one. <laughs> That's right. And yet, uh, my losses are in the single digits. You know about two of those: Digital River and uh, Research in Motion. Rim, yeah. Uh, my, yeah, my Digital River loss was what, like five point seven percent instead of thirty-five. Mm -hmm. Instead of thirty-five percent, I lost five point seven. Okay, I'm the only stock market trading guru that I'm aware of that brags brags about his losers. <laughs> you know, I, I think it, it makes sense to do, okay? Listen, if you could turn back the calendar and convert each of your losses last year to 6% or less while keeping your winners, would you, you do it? I don't know if anybody uh, that's trading covered calls had a 12% winner, all right? But if you could just keep your winners and, and, and convert your losses from last year to 6% or less, well, this is what everybody said. Mm-hmm. They would have been very happy. Mike, let's uh, run a follow-on poll to that, okay? Uh, could you put a dollar amount on how much better you would have done? Yeah, we already had 100%, so they would have been done better. Last year to this year, right. they would have just kept their losses to 6%. So, so my question is how much? How much better? Now, I haven't even delivered on the other two promises of this webinar, and we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I've got two more promises. The first promise was I have solved the biggest problem that most face, uh, traders face in their trading. I have solved it. So, you know, our, the question is are you going to adopt the solution? Uh, let's see. I've had that up for about mm, 40 seconds. Let's leave it up for another five seconds is all. Three, two, one. And close and share. Okay, now, Mike, fourteen percent said I did. I don't get it. Okay. I don't get it. Okay, and, and that's all right. You know, we'll we'll stick around. We'll still help you. All right, uh, but uh, you know, after all the numbers that I showed you, I don't. I, you know, I, I don't know how I can make it more clear yet. But I'll figure out a way. <laughs> Forcing yourself not to lose too much when you happen to be wrong is a good idea. The other 86% got that. So let's see. 9% uh, would have saved at least 350 on their worst trade last year. Mm -hmm. 
27% say that this would have made a difference of $1,000 to $5,000. 23% said it would have made a $5,000 to nearly $10,000 difference. And 27% said this information would have made $10,000 worth of difference. $10,000 worth of difference. Okay, cool. Um, well, Mike, uh, what I'm going to do is, is hide that poll. I'm going to uh, show the blueprint. The blueprint it will teach you, number one, how to set up trades like that, how to find them. Also, uh, how to make adjustments to where you can become what we call bulletproof. Right. Okay, now, bu bulletproof is not guaranteed from the beginning, but if you do have a situation where your net cost for your stock and your put is lower than your put option, strike price, you're bulletproof. You have unlimited upside potential, but you cannot get hurt. And uh, uh, I'm going to show you a trade in which I, I did that. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Uh, let's see. We already shared the poll. I'm on this. Let's uh, get off of here. Oh, you know what, Mike? This this uh, webinar is meant to be educational, not promotional. Okay, but I got you know I have to be responsible and show everybody where to go to order it. <laughs> okay, we're not going to do a fancy salesman close or anything like that. But if you want to go to RadioactiveTrading.com, hit the products tab, you can pick up the blueprints. And uh, the, the the one thing that I want to point out, besides the bonuses and so forth, is this right here. Okay, this is a bulletproof trade. Your Satisfaction is 100% guaranteed. We don't process a lot of refunds, but when we do, there's no hassle. You know, if, if you're not satisfied with your blueprint, just send it back for a complete refund. So, when you spend your 339, you're going to either be happy and it's going to make you money, or you're not going to be happy and you'll send it back and you haven't lost a thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, except for maybe investing a little bit of time, uh, trying to trying to test it out. Okay, so here's the deal: the income methods. Uh, are gonna uh, we're gonna introduce next. Remember that break even, Mike, of thirty eighty five. Yes. Okay, we're gonna reduce that. That's what the income methods are all about. Okay, and we're gonna show bulletproof. And let's go back to this trade. Whoops. Now remember, uh, the objection was, okay, Kurt, you spent thirty eighty five. You spent more than more than ten percent of what the stock's price is on that put option. Mm -hmm. So that stock has to really move before you're making any money. Well, I'm going to destroy that argument. <laughs> I'm going to absolutely put it in tatters, okay? But uh, I, I know a lot of folks think, you know, uh, geez, you invested 3085. You're going to have to, you know, see that side go to 3095 before you make a dime. It's not true. Okay. Now, when we talk about income methods, most folks think about covered calls, right? But what we have already established about covered call selling. Well, it's, we've established that it's already the sorting machine, that it's going to cap our gains. It's going to limit our upside, but uh, potentially still leave us open to full downside risks. Right. Uh, Mike, I'm going to show two of the ten ways that I take income from a stock or guarantee a higher return or reduce the risk or all three. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and uh, uh, the first one is uh, called the money net. I use this um, uh, on Altera to catch more premium than a cover call would have in the same time frame. And I caught some premium on the front end, but then I got more premium later. Okay. And mm -hmm. then the second is the bulletproof vest. And the bulletproof vest was used to uh, uh, make it so that you know there's an earnings announcement coming up, and I wanted to make it so that there's no way I can lose. Right. Okay. So. So, very good. How are we doing on time? We've got, uh, let's see. 12.58. Okay, and we want to finish at 15 minutes past the hour. Yes. Now, uh, I understand a lot of folks may have to leave right now because of lunch or appointments or whatever. Uh, almost all these webinars, they go an hour and 15, uh, sometimes uh, an hour and 20, 25 if, if we've got a lot of questions. But um, the meat and potatoes, and, and quite honestly, the best thing about this whole deal I've already shown. <laughs> I've already shown. This other stuff is fascinating and cool, but really, uh, I've already shown you the secret to making money online uh, in the internet. I'm sorry, in the in, in investing, and that is to cut your losers short, let your winners run, and have a plan for doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, anyway, here's here's uh, the move. I call this the money net. Mike, uh, uh, I did Altera trade on 500 shares. Okay. okay. 
And that means five put options, and that means if I'm going to sell calls, I'm selling you know boatloads of calls, all right? But uh, let's just cut it down to 100 shares, just so we can make the math easy to work with, okay? So I've got 100 shares, and I sell two calls. What's the problem with doing that? Well, now you're in an awkward position where one of your short calls is covered by your stock, and the other one is not. It's essentially a naked call now. It's not covered by anything, and it has infinite risk to the upside. That's right. Okay. If the stock goes up, I could get hurt. Okay. But what I'm going to do with that um, uh, part of that premium is I'm going to buy a long call option at lower strike price. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's going to cost me a little more. It's going to cost a buck forty-five instead of eighty-five cents. So. Um, I have a net credit. If I sell two and buy one, I've got a net credit. Now, Mike, am I in any way uncovered now? No. You, your original short call, or one of your short calls is covered by your stock. The other short call is covered by the long option you just purchased that was funded from the premium by selling the two calls. That's right. Okay. Now, uh, this is the graph of a ratio call spread, which is when you uh, buy one call and sell two against it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when it's done at a credit like this, you see, uh, as long as the stock stays below the uh, uh, the uh, low strike, you're going to keep that credit. But something really interesting happens if the stock's price goes up, you stand to collect more. This is how you open it. But later on, see as as uh, the uh, stock approaches twenty nine dollars a share. Mm -hmm. Okay, if it gets to twenty nine dollars a share, my twenty nine dollar calls are going to expire worthless. But what about my twenty eight dollar call? Well, it's going to be in the money, isn't it, Kurt? It's going to have some intrinsic value. Right. So I'd be able to, you know, sell it for a profit, and I got it for free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I got paid to get it. Look at this. You know, you open up the credit spread, and then if the stock goes up. Well, you know, uh, you stand to make more money. Okay, it's really cool. But there's a problem. The problem is if the stock goes high enough, well, you know, one of those calls is uncovered. One of the two short calls is not covered, and we could get into trouble. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, um, if I own stock, Mike, what happens to all this pink area if I own the stock? Well, it's going to disappear, isn't it, Kurt? Because now you right. don't have that infinite risk because both your calls are covered. One is covered by the stock. The other is covered by the long call that you purchased. Right. So uh, this purple line right here, to the left of it, this is all that I uh, can possibly experience. That's why I call this a riskless call spread. Mm -hmm. It's a riskless spread. And the reason that it's riskless is because it's done in the context of, okay, I own the stock. Okay. All right. So uh, here's the deal. The total amount that had been invested was thirty dollars and eighty-five cents, and I just collected a credit of only twenty-five cents, you know, for doing the ratio call spread. But the new cost basis for the stock and the put is has been reduced. Instead of a break-even at thirty eighty-five, now my break-even is thirty-sixty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Still have that guaranteed exit of uh, twenty-nine dollars in case the stock crashes. So my at-risk amount is no longer a dollar eighty-five; it's a dollar sixty kind of cool. Now that was income method number five, also called the money net. Now what's really exciting about the money net is uh, if the stock goes down, you keep the money. Yes. All right. If the stock goes up, you might take in even what? more money. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and here's the deal. What happened is expiration Friday, all right, the stock went up to $29.40. Well, if it's a twenty-nine dollars and forty cents, one of those covered calls is going to call away my stock, right? Yes, you're going to be obligated to deliver one hundred those one hundred shares of stock, Kurt, uh, if the stock's above twenty-nine. Right. Now, there's three management techniques discussed in the blueprint. I'm going to show one. Okay. Three management techniques discussed in the blueprint. The one that I used was this: I bought to close one of the two short calls. Now. What that does is it adds to my cost basis on the stock and put, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to so add looks, money back in. Yeah, so it looks like I'm going backwards because now my guaranteed exit of 219, uh, the diff uh, I'm sorry, 229. 29. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the difference between the uh, cost 
basis and that is 215. Okay? But, 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 let's not forget, okay? There were short calls at the $29 strike and I said that I got paid at the beginning and then I got paid again, right? How can that be? Well, uh, let's see. <clears throat> When I open this, okay, the ratio call spread, I bought one $28 call and sold two $29 calls, collecting $0.25 cents net. Now, on October 15, I buy to close one of those short calls at $0.55. Cents. So that's a net debit of $0.30. Cents. But what does it leave? Oh, you still there, Mike? Well, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and mention this to my audience, okay? Uh, we've got one long $28 call and one short $29 call, and it's still in place. It's a bull call spread, but see, this is expiration Friday, and the stock is trading above $29. It's in the money. It's guaranteed to win. So I've spent 20, 30 cents, okay, by taking 25 in and managing it with a 55 cent expense. Okay, uh, I've paid 30 cents, in other words, for a guaranteed dollar. In the middle of the night, what happens is automatic exercise. My broker looks and says, Kurt gets stock at $28, and so he buys it. And then he looks and he sees the short call and says, oh, Kurt must sell at $29, and so he sells it. So on my behalf, in the middle of the night, a dollar is added to my account, and it costs 30 cents to do that. Kind of cool? All right. Now, Mike, in the same time frame, it sounds like you're back, are you? Yes, I'm sorry. I had to sign for a delivery real quick. Gotcha. No big deal. Okay. A plain vanilla covered call would have only generated 30 cents if I wanted to keep the stock. Remember when I, I sold them for 85 cents? Mm-hmm. Right? And, and, and then had to buy back at, at 55 cents. If I just sold one call and uh, bought bought it back, it would be a net 30, but this was the net 70 cents, okay, collected by using the money net. All right, so, uh, so that's the first cool thing I want to show you. Now, after uh, adjusting this cost basis all the way down, now I don't have the uh, $30.85 cost basis, I've right. got a $30.15 cost basis, so I've changed the break even. I've reduced the gap, okay, and that's kind of cool, but that's not the coolest thing. <laughs> We're going to show the bulletproof vest now, Mike, and uh, uh, I wonder if we should take, take a, uh, a moment to answer a question or two. We've got eight minutes left. I've got to show this, but do we have any questions on the, uh, on the uh, money net? Nothing has come in yet um, regarding the money net trade. Okay. Um, the income method number five position. Um, the questions that came in earlier uh, were just a, a few comments of others. Um, uh, just so everyone knows, uh, we are recording this presentation. Um, we showed these income methods before on a, a previously archived presentation, so we might replace that existing archive with this one or just leave the old ones up. Uh, most likely we'll replace the old one with this one. Um, so I was going to say, yeah. If anyone let's, had any questions about that, we are recording it, and it'll probably be posted later on this afternoon, uh, maybe around 4 or 5 o'clock Eastern time. Very cool. Okay. Mike, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about the uh, 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 bulletproof vest. Okay. Wait, wait. One what? question. Sorry, oh, we did I did have a question. Get one. Go ahead. Let's hit it real fast. Go ahead. Okay. It was Roger wanted to know, before you wrap up, can you bring up the money net slide again so I can see the setup? Remember, we were selling two calls, Roger, and buying one. Assume that you have 100 shares of stock and one put. We had 100 shares of Altera at 2735 and one March 29 put that we paid, um, I, I'm sorry, two, two set 374 or uh, oh, Are you 55. looking at the screen, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. Are you looking at the screen? It's up there. Yeah, so that was the original married put, and then we put this on top of the married put, Roger. We sold two October 29 calls at 170 and bought one October 28 call. Now remember, I always want to phrase this because I don't want people to just start doing this after they watch a webinar and think that it's going to be okay. No. <laughs> Kurt waited for this position to move up in price. He didn't put on this income method as soon as he opened the stock. When we open an RPM, a radioactive profit machine, we're going to wait to see first what the stock does. If the stock is stagnated, 
we would have done a completely different income method. If it had dropped slightly in price, we would have done something completely different. If it would have moved up higher after Kurt opened the position, Kurt might have considered a completely different income method. So the rules of when you want to look at the particular income methods, how exactly you want to set them up at that time, and what your expectations are, that's only uh, contained in the blueprint. And Ryder says, awesome, thanks. So I think he got the setup now, uh, Kurt. We can move back forward to... Back forward. <laughs> back forward, yes. Back to the future. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to income method <laughs> number three. Very good. Okay, income method number three, the bulletproof vest. Remember I said that this is a, a spread trade that you've likely never seen. And the reason that you've likely never seen it is because I use it as an adjustment to a married put. Uh, instead of, you know, if I simply sold one option that was further out in expiry and bought one that was closer in to expiry, I could generate this credit, right? That's that. right. Yeah, that's right. It would be sort of a reverse calendar spread, which can be extremely tricky. Yeah, it can be extremely dangerous. You know, I could get in trouble by doing this. But I'm not going to get in trouble by doing this because I actually have the put on hand to sell. I've got it on hand. You know, I, 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 uh, I bought it originally. So now when I do the spread trade, it's a spread with one of the legs already being in existence. Mm -hmm. Okay, I sell the $29 put option for $2.52. Now here's something that's kind of interesting. Mike, the stock went up during the time that I was playing it so far, yes. $2.05. Mm -hmm. It's gone up from $27.35 to $29.40. But the put option cost me 350, and now it's down to 252. It's only lost 98 cents. Kind of interesting. Now watch how I recover this by swapping that far put option for a near-term put option. Okay, uh, an interesting phenomenon about the stock going up is that all puts come down in price. Okay, so the the nearer-term puts come down in price a lot. Mm -hmm. and the far, uh, further out uh, puts come down just a smidgen. And uh, so I'm able to not just collect a credit for swapping them, but Mike, if you'll notice, instead of a $29 strike, now I have a $30 strike. Right. Kind of cool? Yes, we right. have a guaranteed a higher payout, and we received a credit to do that, didn't we? Right. I'm getting paid to do it. Now, some folks will say, well, wait a minute. Now you can't hold it all the way out till March. Dude. I never intended to hold it all the way out till March. We established that earlier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have the choice. We could hold it all the way to expiration, all the way to March if we decided to, but we don't have to, and we're certainly not planning to. That's right. Now, Mike, the cost basis for my put option, I'm sorry, my married put, mm -hmm. you know, the stock, stock plus the put option, was 3015 after doing the money net, right? After doing income method five. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay, so after doing income method three, I get a credit of 90 cents, and that makes my net cost basis for the stock and my new put option is 29.25. That's how much I have spent effectively so far, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a $30 strike. That's what my new put option guarantees me at. So what kind of risk am I talking about now? Well, now we're talking about an interesting phenomenon. It's a negative at risk amount, and the negative at risk really means a guaranteed profit. No matter what happens now, if the stock collapses and drops to $2 per share, you're still guaranteed to make $0.75 cents on your investment. However, have we sold a call yet or sold no. a call to do this? No. So that means the upside is still unlimited. Right. I have unlimited upside potential. Can't get hurt. The uh, uh, enviable position that we have here is called bulletproof. Mike, you uh, you were in a couple of bulletproof positions during your during your counseling session, coaching uh, session, right? Coaching session. Uh, it might have turned into a counseling session <laughs> uh, on uh, uh, May six. You know, during the flash crash, and that client of yours was you know freaking out and had to get off the phone, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you had a number of bulletproof positions, and, and, and uh, how did that affect your mental state? Well, I was fine. I mean, I felt bad for the customer because he wasn't protected and he needed to scramble to make some adjustments. But in my personal account, what I was looking at, I was perfectly fine. I was perfectly set. Right. Um, and, and you know this about me. I actually 
you know, because I run a martial arts studio in the evening and sometimes I work long hours and so forth, I was taking a nap. <laughs> I was taking a nap during the flash crash. My mother called me, wakes me up, says, Kurt, I know that you do things in the stock market. Are you okay? Do you know what's going on? I said, Mom, relax. It's no big deal. You know, so anyway, the reason I wanted to be bulletproof with this one, Mike, uh, was because um, Altera was coming out with an earnings announcement on November 4th. Okay. And, and so it's October 15th. I'm swapping for the November puts, right? The November put expires after November 4th. So mm -hmm. uh, I want to be protected, you know, as we're going into the, um, the earnings announcement, okay, uh, which uh, turned out to be positive. The uh, Bulletproof S is one of several ways that we might reduce the cost basis to less than the put strike price, resulting in a new position that has unlimited upside but no risk. It's called Bulletproof. Now that, that catchy saying, don't, don't, uh, uh, don't pick stocks, pick stops, mm -hmm. well, uh, that's, that's for the setup, but for the income methods, I like to say, don't time trades, trade time. This income method number three adjustment was made after the fact, after the stock made a move. Then I was able to take the credit. Right. That's kind of cool. You know, do a credit spread that uh, uh, you don't have to bite your fingernails to the second knuckle, wondering mm -hmm. you know when, if it's going to pay for a year or not. Okay. Now here's the the interesting phenomenon that makes this possible. Remember that the the put strike price had been three dollars and fifty cents, right? Yes, we were at three fifty. It was an in the money put, which means that some of that puts value was intrinsic, and some of it was time value. Mm -hmm. The amount of that, that strike that was time value is $1.85. Well, uh, so as a stock's price goes up, the put does come down in value, yes? That's right. We're going to decline. We're going to lose value on our put option as the stock moves up in price. Right. But the portion that was uh, uh, time value went up. The portion of that puts pricing that was time value went up. You see, it's 100% time value in the second column, mm -hmm. $2.52. And in the first column, uh, the, it's a, a $1.85. Now, you might say, well, Kurt, that's still a loss. You know, you still took a loss in the put. Well, did I? Yes, in a uh, sense. The put lost okay. value, but as the position yeah. as a whole, you didn't really lose. Right. In order for that put to lose its value, the stock had to go up, and guess what? I own the stock. Mm -hmm. So every dollar lost from the intrinsic value of the put is a dollar gained in the value of the stock itself. Right. There's no net loss. It just changes columns. It goes from column A to column B, and I own both columns. So that's kind of cool. So uh, here's how uh, income method number three and income method number four work. It's by taking the new value of the put uh, the time value and exploiting that move. That's a strange phenomenon. The stock goes up and the time value goes, I'm sorry, yeah, it goes up also. Kind of cool. All right, so uh, when you reduce the gap to less than zero, you are bulletproof, and that's an exciting thing. Uh, now, uh, Mike, uh, we could take another couple of questions. While those questions are, are uh, plugging in, uh, what I want to do is point something out. Remember the original setup, $30.85. And everybody said, Kurt, you can't make a dime until the stock hits 3095. The observation I want to make is that when the stock was at 2940, I was bulletproof. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it didn't have to make that big of a magnitude. It didn't have to make that big of a move before I'm guaranteed a gain. All right, so this investment, and it is an investment, this investment in the insurance policy is very desirable. In fact, that second income method couldn't have worked without the put, could it? That's true. If we didn't have the put, we couldn't make that adjustment. We had right. nothing of value to sell, and so we just would have ended up buying something else. <laughs> okay. As it turns out, the stock did go up. Uh, I made $3.85 a share or 12% on my investment uh, because the upside was left open. Okay. And um, uh, never had more than 6% at risk. Now, uh, I don't want to sit here and brag, you know, if we want to brag, we, should, we ought to talk about your returns, Mike, because uh, last year you had, a, you had a trade that returned 59.8% and never had the more, more than 7% risk, and you were bulletproof most of the time. Yes, it exceeded my expectations, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, I'm not. I don't want to brag about mine, and I don't want to brag about yours even. I want to brag about what our viewers can do. We want to okay. show what's possible. What has not worked for you before, and what is possible now? And most of our uh, attendees already answered that for themselves. We only had a few people that were happy with their trading results over the last year, and 100% of our attendees at the time would have been happy if they would have kept their wins but limited their losses to only 6% or less. Right. Here's, here's those results. Again. 50% would have said, yes, I'm very happy with my trading if they'd only uh, reduced their losses last year to 6% whenever they took a loss. 28% mm -hmm. had said no or mixed emotions as far as what their actual record was, but would have said, yes, I'm happy. Right. And 22% had a losing year, and this would have made it a winning year. All right, so uh, pretty, pretty cool. Okay, Mike, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up unless we've got a question or two. I apologize. Uh, I think we have a couple coming in here. Uh, another one from okay. Roger. Is there an equivalent setup to the married put for a bearish outlook? This has been a popular question coming up recently, and uh, how do we approach that? Uh, there's three different ways, sir, to do that. Three different ways to uh, take a, uh, an RPM, a radioactive profit machine, and turn mm -hmm. it upside down for a bearish outlook. Um, the uh, I only recommend two of the three ways, and uh, I, I believe you can find an answer in the blueprint. We're certainly going to have it in the fusion education lessons. Mm -hmm. We'll say Next outright question. though. Yeah, no, we'll say outright though. But don't uh, don't just think you can do the opposite. There's a reason why we don't advocate doing the married call setup by just shorting stock and buying the in the money long call option. That's not the right approach, and there's a specific reason why. Right, not a good way to go. Okay. That all right, was next it. question. That was it. That's all I had so it. far. We want to hold on for five, ten seconds and see if another one comes in. We can. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I have right now. All right. I'm going to review the benefits for everyone of trading radioactively, and I'm going to ask you to make the decision to trade radioactively, even if you don't pick up my book. Although, uh, I think you, you know what a lot of folks do, Mike? A lot of folks have done this. They, they take uh, what they get from the free webinar, uh -huh. and then they try it in their account. And then they say, okay, because I was radioactive on that last trade, I either saved or I made X amount more. And then they say, okay, now I'll get the blueprint. <laughs> I mean, that's happened a lot of times where we've had folks write, that, write in and say that. All right. Um, I'm going to recommend that you maybe just pick up the blueprint so that you cut down the learning curve, okay, uh, especially since it is guaranteed. If you decide you don't like it, send her back. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's the benefits. It's an overlay onto whatever trading you already do. If you already have uh, stocks that you're comfortable with trading and entry and exit signals that you already are familiar with, hey, keep that up. There's no reason you ought to change. But this is a money management overlay. It's an overlay to keep you out of trouble in case you're wrong. Okay. Secondly, uh, because losses are controlled from the beginning, you can't get hurt too badly. I don't make any income claims. I want to be different than everybody out there. I make claims like this. You can't lose more than 6% or 5% or however you set up your trade. That's a lot better and more honest way to go, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Bulletproofing. How would you feel about taking a stock that you already own and making it so that you can't lose on it. In fact, if you've got a stock that's already up from where you purchased it, you might be able to bulletproof yourself right now. But the proper way to do that is going to be in the book. Okay. And then finally, it's scalable. Mike, I did my first radioactive trade with only $2,500 in my account back in October of 2002. Mm -hmm. But uh, much bigger fish than I from all over the world trade this. Folks that have much more capital to uh, protect do this okay so I've had folks with seven and one fellow with eight figures <laughs> right in the market call me for advice and the thing is I told him hey look <laughs> I'm not as big a fisher as you are you sure you want me to advise you and he says well yeah you know talk to me how, how do I protect myself I'm gonna mm -hmm. get into this trade what do you think of it I said, well I wouldn't do that you know so very good. Okay, Mike, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap her up. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming. And, and for those of you that stuck around for this long, listen, 
Watch your mailbox. Watch your physical mailbox at your house. If you provided your, uh, you should have provided your accurate information. Um, I'm going to be sending you a free gift. Okay, so watch your mailbox uh, for a postcard from Radioactive Trading, and um, uh, free gift for everybody that participates today. Thanks so much for coming, Mike. Thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. Finally back yeah. in action. So. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> All right, so I'll see you again on Tuesday, yes? Correct, sir. Mm -hmm. All righty. We'll see you then and see everybody out there. Happy trading and bye for now. All right, take care. Bye-bye.